Why are shopping prices so high in Ireland? The latest data from the Central Statistics Office puts the Irish inflation rate at 7.2% for the 12 months between April 2022 and April 2023. However, the inflation rate for food and non-alcoholic beverages during that same period was 13.1%, nearly six percentage points higher than the rate of general inflation. And that's just the headline figure. When you look beneath the hood, the price increases for certain goods are are even higher again. Sugar up 38.9%, frozen fish up 29.9%, milk up 24.1%, butter up 18.9%, and eggs up 18.3%. Staple goods in the weekly shop are becoming increasingly unaffordable, which is putting pressure on Irish household finances. But why is this happening? To answer that question, we first need to take our gaze off of Ireland and onto the Eurozone. In April 2023, Allianz published a research paper entitled European Food Inflation, Hungry for Profits, which contains useful insights into the food inflation situation that is prevalent across Europe. Allianz notes that while headline inflation in the Eurozone declined to 6.9% in March, food, alcohol and tobacco inflation rose again to 15.4% during that same period. They then go on to say that food inflation will contribute almost one third to overall inflation in 2023 up from less than 20% in 2022 and should average 8% before turning deflationary, i.e. negative 3.8% in 2024. So to be clear, this is a problem that's affecting the entirety of Europe, not just Ireland. As is illustrated by the graph, the expectation is that food inflation in the Eurozone will start to normalize from Q3, which is less than two months away. But that doesn't explain why food inflation is so much higher than general inflation. Commodity prices, including wheat, soybeans, corn, and fertilizer, have fallen sharply from their 2022 peaks. One would expect this to translate into less pricing pressure on food, but that hasn't been the case. Instead, the continuing pressure on food prices seems to be coming from the operating costs of both food producers and retailers. According to Allianz, the cost of oil was 43% higher in 2022 as compared to 2021. Electricity was up 145%, paper Paper, glass, metal, and plastic packaging was up 24, 18, 23, and 16 percent respectively, while the unit labor cost in the retail sector was up over 5 percent. Naturally, both food producers and retailers need to pass on some or all of the increase in costs to their customers. Food producers will charge retailers a higher price to acquire goods, and retailers will pass on those higher prices to end customers like you and me. However, in 2022, food producers increased their price by 17%, whereas retailers only increased their prices by 12%, which suggests that retailers haven't passed all of the increase in costs onto the end customer. Interestingly, the financial statements of publicly listed retailers confirm that costs rose faster than sales, with retailer gross margins shrinking and falling below their pre-pandemic levels. That is in direct contradiction to a lot of the narrative that we're hearing about food inflation, which suggests that it's a byproduct of profit hearing by retailers, but more on that later. Allianz notes that food inflation does vary significantly across Eurozone countries. However, the key thing to note here is that two factors which drive food inflation rates in a given country are A, the popularity of discount brand food items, and B, the popularity of processed foods. Keep that in mind. Allianz do touch on the point of excessive corporate profit taking driving food inflation, and note that since mid-2022, about 10% of the change in food prices can't be explained based on historical dynamics. In other words, while there are undoubtedly instances of profiteering among retailers, and while those instances aren't necessarily immaterial, they likely aren't as big as the media is suggesting. So with that being said, let's now turn our attention back to Ireland. Kantar issued a report on the Irish grocery sector for April 2023, which suggested that the grocery inflation rate in Ireland is currently 166 Notably, this is 20 basis points lower than the grocery inflation rate that was seen in March 2023, representing the first dip in almost two years. Kantar notes that the market saw much stronger own label growth at 15.6% as compared to brand growth at 8%. This is because shoppers are looking for ways to save money. Value own label ranges had the strongest growth up 33.4%, with shoppers spending 18 million euro more on these ranges. 
ranges. Brands hold 47.5% of the market, while own label ranges hold 46.9%. Remember, Allianz noted that the popularity of discount brands is a key driver of food inflation because, quote, their prices are likely to increase at a faster pace compared to those of brands where other costs are more flexible. This may partly explain the high rate of grocery inflation in Ireland. Dunn's Tesco, Little Aldi and SuperValue saw year-on-year -year growth rates equal to 15.3, 14.9, 14.4, 11.4 and 5.7% respectively, with Dunn's Tesco and SuperValue representing nearly two-thirds of the total grocery market. Elsewhere, retailers like WH Smith recorded their most profitable year in Ireland in 2022, while Eurogiant increased its profits by 25%, despite revenues falling by 3%, which could be an indication of profiteering. Speaking of which, let's look at the profiteering narrative in more detail. The basic idea around profiteering or price gouging is that a company will seek to earn an excessive profit by taking advantage of market conditions and charging a price that is considered to be unreasonable or unfair. In the context of retailers, the speculation is that they're keeping their prices high and using the inflation narrative as a justification for doing so, even though their profit margins are expanding. Leo Varadkar has said that there is some evidence that some retailers are securing bigger profit margins in Ireland than they would in other markets. He didn't specify what the evidence is, nor did he specify who the retailers are. The problem is that the profitability of Irish retailers is shrouded in ambiguity. Their financial results aren't reported publicly, which makes it very difficult to ascertain whether profiteering is afoot. If we had greater transparency, there wouldn't be any need for speculation. However, according to Minister of State Neil Richmond, there are unverified reports of price gouging among retailers. These reports, in addition to the widespread concern around grocery price inflation, led to an early congregation between government representatives and the retail forum. At this meeting, the government received assurances from retailers that where reductions in input costs filter through to products, consumers will benefit from these reductions in costs. In other words, when retailer costs fall, so too will prices. Essentially, retailers are defending their prices, and this isn't necessarily unreasonable. It's very easy to raise the pitchforks and claim profiteering without any concrete data. Remember, the Allianz data shows that retailers passed on some, not all, of their higher costs in 2022, and that profit margins shrunk below pre-pandemic levels. Yes, that's not going to be the case for every retailer, but that is what the macro data from Europe is telling us. Ireland isn't even in the worst of positions in terms of grocery inflation among our European counterparts. Retailers are dealing with increased costs from suppliers, increased operating costs, and pressure from both consumers and government to reduce prices. Those retailers in normal times yield a profit margin in the region of 1-3%, to not necessarily anything to write home about. As such, it's hard to envisage that the level of profiteering is as bad as is being suggested. Plus, Irish consumers have demonstrated a heightened preference for discount brands, which as we know are a key driver of grocery inflation due to their sensitivity to rising costs. The expectation is for food inflation to start normalizing in the Eurozone in Q3, which begins in July. That same expectation applies to Irish food inflation, and if Ireland starts deviating off course from other European countries, then that's when it would be appropriate to really start asking the tough questions. I'm not saying there are no instances of price gouging happening right now, but if the data from Europe is anything to go by, it's likely that the extent of any price gouging is being blown out of proportion. Ireland is not an outlier in Europe by any means. There have been suggestions for the introduction of price caps, idea being that the government would impose maximum prices that can be charged to consumers for certain goods. The government has this power in accordance with Section 62 of the Consumer Protection Act of 2007, which states that if an emergency order is in force in respect of a product under Section 61, the government may by order fix the maximum price at which that product may be supplied by a trader to consumers. However, a report from Euro Commerce suggests that price caps are ineffective and have unintended negative consequences for consumers. The group warns against any measures seeking to regulate prices for food products, stating that the best means of ensuring affordable prices is the already strong competitive pressures within the retail sector. This was echoed by Neil Richmond during a debate on grocery inflation, where he stated that major retailers have reduced the price of milk by 10 cent per liter and butter by 40 cents per pound. This is very welcome and is a clear indication that comp 
competition in the retail sector is having an impact, with retailers matching their competitors' lower prices. Eurocommerce goes on to say that price caps have been shown to result in price increases for other goods, reduced product availability, and an outright unviability of doing business, thus leading to job losses. Collusion, supply chain disruptions, panic buying, these are but some of the potential consequences of price caps. There isn't even a consensus among authorities, academics, and economists as to whether price caps are effective in controlling inflation. Strong competition at the retail level has helped curb the impact of inflation for consumers. The sector has sought to limit price increases for consumers through the absorption of a significant portion of extra costs related to energy and price rises that are being demanded by the retailer's large suppliers. Even the Irish Competition and Consumer Protection Commission recommended against the implementation of price caps, stating that competition has worked quite well for consumers here in terms of product choice. Price caps are not going to happen in Ireland, and frankly, they're not needed. The government is going to wait until the end of June for the next meeting of the retail forum, at which point the situation will be discussed again. However, based on the Allianz data, it's unlikely that we'll see any meaningful change until Q3 or Q4 of this year. So we can expect the profiteering narrative and the ongoing debate in the Oireachtas to continue until that happens. But let me know, what are your thoughts on shopping prices in Ireland? Have you felt the pinch of higher prices in your weekly shop? If so, what items have become most expensive for you? If you found this video to be useful, can I ask that you take just two seconds out of your day to show your support by leaving a like on the video, subscribing to the channel, and sharing the video with family and friends. Before you go, you might be interested in this next video, which looks at the question, why are mortgage rates in Ireland so high? Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.